you know, it was always kind of the goal to just be like, let's throw her into the belly of the beast. One of the things I love about your movies is how familiar they feel, but at the same time, completely original. So I'm wondering, how do you balance those two things that as an audience, we know these spaces, but they also feel completely new? I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, it's probably better for someone like yourself to say that. But I, I think for me, what I'm trying to do is I have what I would hope would be my original story for a movie. And then I'm trying to, especially in a period piece, put you in a time and place that seems believable and authentic. So that way you're in the story with the characters. And so to some degree, I have to kind of recreate a reality that people are familiar with. And some of it is based on nostalgia and some of it's based on like realism and then some of it's based on um the way the movies of an era felt and so i think all that combined sort of starts to create like a uh like a palette i guess that the that the movies can exist in and i think in general like archetypes whether they be styles or archetypes being characters and things like that they're a good way for an audience to to be familiar with the type of story and then you can tell them a different version of that story but it's a it's a relatable way in for them and with this one you do something very interesting which is you actually go to a very iconic horror film location i'm wondering how a sequence like that happens like is it hard to get permission for that or do you just write it in and go and show up or how do you how does that I, happen i wrote it in and I, I i had no backup plan if we had not gotten permission and so <laughs> fortunately for us we got permission it's not necessarily it's neither hard nor not hard it's just in our in situation they said yes you know and so if they had said no i don't know what we would have done but i wrote it in because in x they mentioned psycho and it was sort of looming over that movie and i thought oh this is a nice way for her to visit a, a, a fake location and tie it into the other movies and tie it into horror in general. And um, yeah, it's one of those things that's just like, it's pretty crazy that it happened. All three of your movies and, and your past ones, but specifically these three are directed with a lot of confidence. Like you can, you can tell that it's someone behind the camera with a lot of confidence in their choices. But I'm wondering how you as a filmmaker feel about that. Are you that confident or are you kind of figuring things out? How clear is your vision from the start? I'm pretty decisive in the sense that, you know, I have a plan of what I'm setting out to do. And sometimes I'll have, you know, shoot things that kind of get me around it if I don't think it's working. But generally speaking, I mean, th these movies were designed to be very, like, uh, focused on the craft of filmmaking. That was a big part of making them. So the craft was always going to be, like, front and center in them. And 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 because so style becomes part of that. So it was always pretty baked into the idea of of how they would play out stylistically. I think with, with Pearl specifically, you proved that this universe you created could go literally anywhere with this third one. So how did you decide that this is where you wanted it to go? Well, you know, I, I, I've never had a huge desire to to do sequels and whatnot. And so I, I knew that to catch up with Maxine, you know, in a in a reasonable age range of what Mia could play, I knew would be in the 80s. And I felt like I, I wanted to see, I didn't want to make a story about how she got away from X and then she was like living undercover in some town. Like that wasn't really an interesting story to me. I wanted to take her to Hollywood and give her a real shot at stardom. And so I was interested in then embracing the crazy artifice that is Hollywood and just embracing the scope of that, of the city and of the time. And, um, and just to make a big bombastic movie as a, as a closeout of this trilogy that are about movies. And so you know, it was always kind of the goal to just be like, let's throw her into the belly of the beast. And thinking about this being a movie about the process and all that, um, a big part of our audience is people who are in school, so who want to be filmmakers. So I'm wondering, when you write, how much are you thinking about structure and plot points and all these sort of classroom or textbook concepts? Uh, very little. You know, I, I think that <laughs> people's brains work differently. So for me, I'm kind of making it up as I go. I mean, I... I know when I feel like I've written something that feels satisfying and where it's landing and how it's being like communicated, but I don't have like a outline or um, like any sort of uh, like an intellectual structure plan for it. I just sort of have an idea for a movie, an idea for characters, and I just start going and then I just keep keep at it until it gets to a place where I can read through it and it feels satisfying.